Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video from the news playlist. In this video, I'll go through clean architecture and then we're going to implement data store preferences. Okay, so clean architecture is a way to structure the project and to make it more maintainable and scalable. So what I mean by maintainable is when you want to fix a bug or fix an issue in your project, if your project is too big and it has so many classes, it is going to be hard to find where is that bug. But when we use clean architecture, we basically put everything in its own place. And scalable means that we can implement new features in our project without needing to modify on the code. So we just add a new code to add a new feature, not to modify on the old code. And clean architecture also makes our project testable. So we can test the project easily. And we can do this by splitting the project into three layers, which are the data layer, the domain layer, and the presentation layer. And as you can see in this picture, these are the three layers I talked about. And in each layer, we put some classes. So for example, in the domain layer, we put the use cases, the model classes, which are data classes, and the repositories interfaces. In the data layer, we put everything represent our data. For example, the repositories implementation, data store preferences, databases, and uh, networking, and any other data managers, we just put it inside the data layer. The presentation layer, which I talked about earlier, in there we define our UI, like everything related to the UI, for example, the views or the composables, the view models and the UI events, for example. So anything related with the UI will be inside the presentation layer. And as you can see in this picture, each bigger circle can access the smaller one. So for example, the domain layer cannot access any circle because it's the smallest one. The data layer can access the domain layer, but it can't access the presentation layer. Now the presentation layer, which is the largest circle, it can access the data layer and the domain layer. Okay, now enough talking about clean architecture, let's actually implement the data and the domain layer. So let's go to project, let's create a new layer here or package, and let's call this data. And we also want to create the domain layer. So new package, call this domain. Now inside this domain package, let's create a new package and call this manager. In here, we finally going to create a new interface and call this local user manager. So in this interface, we want to save the app entry when the user clicks on uh, get started in the, in the last onboarding screen. So let's actually create a function for that called save app entry. And we want to be able to read this. So we want to have another function read app entry. And this one will return a flow and boolean. Now we want to implement this manager inside the data layer. And we do this because now this repository is testable because we just can actually fake this one and create a fake repository from this one. And that's why we create the interface inside the domain layer. Now let's create a new package here and call this manager. In here we're going to implement this interface. So let's create a new class called local user manager implementation. Now in here we're going to implement data store preferences and data store preferences is just a jetpack library that allows us to save key value locally on the device. And you might also know share the preferences, which is another API to save key value, but Android team introduced us this new API to save key value, which is now recommended for that. So we're going to implement that in our project. And for that, we need the context here. So let's get that. And in here, we are going to implement the local user interface, local user manager interface. And let's implement these two functions. Okay, so first of all, we want to have an instance from data store. And to get that, we can just create an extension value. We can use private val, an extension value from our context. We can call this data store. Now the type here is, the type is data store. And there are two types of data store, one of them for data store preferences, which is the one we want. So let's actually choose preferences from this package. And then here we're just going to use by and we can say preferences data store. We can pass the name. So for this name, I'm going to create a new package here called this URL. And let me delete this. And we are going to create a new object. And call this constants. 
And in here, I'm gonna create constant value, call this user settings. So this is just the name of our data store. And here I'm gonna pass any string like user settings. I'm gonna copy this one, get back here and pass it for the name. Let's import that. And now we can simply access this object by our context, but to be able to save key value inside our data store preferences, we also need another thing called preferences keys. So let's create a new private object here and we're just gonna put our preferences keys inside here. Let's name this preferences keys. Uh, let's add a new E here. And we're going to have only one key here and I'm called this app entry. And let's make this boolean preferences key. For the name, again, I'm going to create one inside the constants values here. And I'm going to name this app entry. And app entry for the value. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Um, since we have the same name, I'm just going to call constants here. And I'm going to pass app entry. Now, finally, we can implement these two functions. So in the first one, we are going to use our context to access the data store. And here we can just, and here we can call edit. So in here, we get this user settings data, data store. We can name this settings. Then we can just say settings of this key. So we can say preferences key dot, uh, not this one preferences keys and we want the app entry we're gonna make this true now that's for this function now we want to read that value and to do that we're just gonna return return data store or context to data store and now we want to get the data but this will return all the keys so we want to map this and here we get the preferences object and we can simply map this to our key so we can say preferences key our preferences keys and if this null that means we don't have value for that so we want to return false and that's it for these implementations now we want to create use cases for these functions let's go to the domain layer and let's create a new package called this use cases let's create a new use case here and call this save app entry so in here we want an instance from that interface and here we pass the interface, not the implementation. And this is what makes it testable, as I talked about, because we actually want to depend on abstraction. And this local user manager is an interface. So we can just pass different implementations of this one, which makes it again more testable. Now let's actually create suspend function here. And I'm going to make this operator function so we can call this function by the name of this class. And we will call this invoke. Here we're gonna use local user manager to save the app entry. Let's create another use case to read it. So read app entry. And here I'm just gonna go to this function, copy this or this class, and I'm gonna just paste that in here. But here we just wanna return flow of Boolean. And we can return read app entry and that's actually it for this video we have an error here let's return and yeah so that's it for this video in the next video we will work on dagger health so we're gonna implement that and yeah see you there